How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the Salamander Wilds. And this, this is night three. Night three for me, specifically, of the amphibian migration. Because this has been a very, ooh, and just as I'm, in, wow, 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 look how big that bullfrog is. Just as I was gonna introduce this video, look at this. Look how big this is. Oh, that's a good size. I do want a photo of you, though. For sure. Ah, uh -uh. nope, nope. We're not gonna start the video this way. I need to definitely get this. Yeah. Oh, almost dropped my phone now. Look at that. Oh. That is wonderful. That is a pretty nice sized bullfrog. Cool. And just to, uh, yep, there you go. Wow. Let me get that branch out of the way. Um, anyway, like I was saying, um, <laughs> that's a really great way to start the video. But, um, this has been a very strange migration because we have not had the right combination of temperature and weather. And finally, tonight, we've got both. It's been just too cold. Even though we've had rain, the temperature has just been below what it should be. So, camera doesn't want to focus, but I'm going to make this work. Um, yeah, so, of course, I'm on the lookout for any uh, spotted salamanders and... Uh, you can hear already just how loud the forest is. In fact, I think there's more spring peepers tonight just because of this weather than there was the second night that it came. 60 degrees, fantastic weather for this sort of thing, and I'm pretty excited. And there is someone else up ahead, so probably found something already, which is a great sign too. Uh, yeah, let's do this. If you enjoy the video, Please remember to leave a like, share, comment down below, and please subscribe. Let's get into it. February, what was it, 16th? Was that the first night? I think that was the first night. And here we are all the way in April with the big movement, finally. If that's really what's going on here, which I would consider it so, considering the activity here and what I've seen on the road, but then that leads into question, where are the spotted salamanders? So this is, this, what was that? No, oh, okay. Yeah, this is the location where they normally gather. Usually in very, very big numbers, which I was able to capture a few years back in the Spotted Salamander documentary. Definitely go check that out if you have not watched it. Uh, that will actually tell you all you would want to know about these beautiful salamanders I'm trying to find tonight. So let's see. Uh, hmm. I don't see anything in the water. That's interesting. Nothing coming up for air. A lot more debris over here than usual. I might actually go back to the road because I have a feeling that there's gonna be a lot more to see on the road still. So if they're not at the pool, then I need to check the roads still. I think that's kind of my best bet here right now is just checking the roads. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Found one, and it's heading back, which is exactly what I was concerned about. So that could be exactly why they're not in the pool, because whatever salamanders made it, they're done, and they're heading back. Look at that. 
and that looks like a female actually the cloaca is not really enlarged so let me see if i can get a photo beautiful yeah yeah that's that's definitely a female you can see right underneath uh the tail and behind the back legs there that's where the cloaca is and it is not enlarged in the way that a sexually active male would be at this time of year. So she's she's heading back. And that is exactly what my concern was. This has been a very, very strange migration because no big movements this year. And then what do you know, right here? This is probably, what, the only... Well, yeah, this, this is the only spotted salamander that I've seen out in the open this time around. Yeah, look at her go. There she goes. Yep. She's gonna crawl. Let's see how she does this, huh? And this is why Spotted salamanders and other mole salamanders are so difficult to find outside of breeding season because she's going to go back into the forest here, wherever she's going to go, underneath the leaves, she'll find a hole and she will go underground and live her life. And basically, uh, throughout most of the year, they're not really going to be seen above ground. I mean, you can definitely flip over a log and find them, but the chances are pretty slim. So, uh, that's why they're considered mole salamanders, because they spend most of their time underground, and they can also inhabit the burrows of other small animals. Very, very beautiful salamander, though. It actually kind of looks like there's a little indentation in her tail there. So it looks like she actually may have gotten attacked where she's growing her tail back from some sort of incident. So, definitely interesting to see. But yeah, there she goes. With this sort of stuff, it's hard to do just such a short video because there's so much to see out here. And, well, it's 8.24. And I got here closer to 8. So I, I really haven't been here that long. And I've seen so much. You know, there's really still the possibility for an eastern newt while I'm here. It's still early. Um, I could see a gray tree frog even. I've seen those before, well before they come out during the summer because the warm temperatures definitely stirs them up. Um, yeah, I mean, how could I not want to capture all of this on video? What is that? Is that another frog? Is that... See, look at that. I was just talking about great tree frogs. That is so funny. And look at what we got right here. <laughs> that is so awesome. So, that's exactly the point I was just making. How could I not want to capture all this on video? And normally, I don't think these roads are closed in April. So... You know, I don't know, maybe they will give one more night, but somehow... Oh, oh, here we go. Yep, here we go, here we go, here we go. There we go, look at that. That is a nice size one. Look at that. One more spotted salamander for the night. That is awesome. Okay. Definitely want to get some good photos of you. The other one was definitely a little uh, harder to... Yeah. <laughs> that is so awesome. That is a male, by the way. And we can tell, which I will show in just a moment. Oh, here, here he comes. You can tell. 
right, right there, underneath the hind leg, that cloaca is still enlarged. Yep. There it goes. They're done. Male and female. In one night. And, uh, they're going. That's the end of the migration for the spotted salamanders. And so, the eggs that hatch in that vernal pool are going to start the new generation, which will come back to start the breeding cycle all over again in this exact vernal pool. You know, I guess most people really, you know, wouldn't think an animal of this striking is just hiding underground all year until it's time for them to go breed and then make such a big journey to the vernal pool. I mean, think about it. They're coming from this side of the forest down to there. And I mean, for us, you know, we can uh, walk that distance no problem, but I mean, that must be uh, a lot of work for those small legs. It's really incredible. It's really incredible that these animals do something like this every year. Now how? Let's see what he does. I am curious where this animal goes. He's trying to find his way. Probably not through there. I don't think he could squeeze him through that. Readjust. Okay, here we go. I'm kind of getting muddy here, but that's alright. Now is he really gonna scale? this whole thing. I mean, he's gonna find a way, of course, because they do this all the time, every year, right? But, let's see how he does it. See, of course I wanna help him up, but I also wanna see what he does. I think he's gonna end up following, to be honest, because there's no way He's gonna kind of like go up and under. Is he trying to get in there? Yeah, I don't, yeah, yep, he's falling. He's not gonna be able to swim that. <laughs> There's no way he's gonna swim that. Beautiful. All right, I'm gonna help him up because he will fall, actually. Okay. And then, there he goes. Nice and easy. Just like that. Because there was no way he was gonna come up from under this ridge and climb over. He would've just fell all the way back down and I think that would've hurt. But yeah, there he goes. Right back into the forest. He's gonna make his way underneath the leaves and find whatever hole that uh, suits his needs. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful, I love them. I mean, it, it's incredible. <clears throat> it's incredible to me that there's so many different kinds of salamanders from all over the world. <laughs> you have some in the rainforests that actually climb trees, believe it or not. And then you have a different kind of secret lifestyle, right? These beautiful animals that just hide underground where no one sees them until this time of the year. If you come out for this sort of thing, right? Most people aren't doing this. Most people aren't willing to get drenched in the rain, right? Most people aren't gonna try to get muddy, dirty, cold to see an animal like this. I mean, they probably don't even know that it's happening, of course, right? That's one reason why I love doing this because you get to see things that I feel like most people 
in the chaotic everyday life that we lead. Um, you know, who has time to stop and appreciate something like this? You know? I mean, obviously, I'm not the only one that does this sort of thing, but a lot of people I know definitely don't. I don't think it's common. It's great that this particular area does close down the road. Um, but, you know, there's a reason why the hobby in itself is not as big. Um, there's multiple reasons, actually, why this hobby is not as big as, you know, bearded dragons and things like that. Because, look, this salamander is um, very difficult to breed, right? So, unfortunately, most people are catching them. Yeah, I see so many websites that sell salamanders. It's funny, they all sell the same animals. They're all, oh, where are my keys? I need those. Um, they're all out of stock and in stock around the same time because they're catching them. They're not breeding them, they're wild caught and it's sad. And it really needs to stop. Really, really needs to stop. Oh, ooh, another spotted. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I have to find a way to put this stuff in, in the video. Got another male. Yep. In large cloaca. Ooh, he is just kind of hauling his way back right now. Look at that. Is he going to take a little breather though so I can get a good shot of him? Nope, he's just going. He's going. He's like, no, I'm done. He's gonna find his way. He's gonna go underneath those leaves, just like the other two. That's pretty much it. So, didn't get to see them migrate to the pool, but we are witnessing the finale. That's it. And, you know, I'm okay with that. That's pretty cool. So, I might just wrap up the video here after all that. Um, what is that? What is that? What is that? Nothing. Yeah, see, my eyes are like, just kind of like playing pinball, looking at everything to just taking like double and triple takes, making sure if something is an animal or not. But yeah, pretty productive night pretty productive night after all so I think I will actually end it right here I'm gonna have to find some way to, to edit all this in um, but this is a pretty good night so I'm gonna wrap it up here and if you all enjoyed the video please remember to leave a like share comment down below and please subscribe your support is very much appreciated as always and until next time, everyone, I hope you'll all join me for another adventure into the Salamander Wilds.